Aloha and welcome back to Island Style. Now, enjoying a baseball game here at Les Murakami Stadium is a magical experience. But if you can't make it to the game, enjoying it on the radio, right there, those are where the guys are, right there, it's a wonderful experience as well. But there's a lot that goes into every broadcast, and we want to share the story of those storytellers as they translate this game for us to hear and enjoy as a community. Hey, come on, Blue! How's the outside? Third, all the way to the plate, standing up will be Lopez, sliding into second with a run scoring double is the Schulich. The post now leads six to one. Baseball is a kind of game, first of all, you don't have to be a freak to play it. Second of all, it's not timed, uh, it's by action, it's uh, by the way the teams are made and the way the teams perform that you get a winner, that you get a winner at the end. Radio is great because on radio, the person that listens has his own private picture in his mind, and you have to supply that picture. And it really is the theater of the mind. So your use of adjectives, your use of the way that you describe the action, he can see it. If he can see it, then you're doing your job. And your job is to, you know, to provide that. If you look at my homework, you're, see, you're seeing at least two hours of homework on this little little uh, sheet right there for today's game. It was two hours for yesterday, two hours for the day before. Because you have to be prepared, that's the thing. Uh, and you have to be ready. Because in baseball, nothing happens and then almost everything happens. And it happens at a time that is very crucial to the outcome of the game. You can have seven innings of boring baseball, but when it starts to get into that crunch time, that you don't have enough time to, to perform to decide the winner. That's when it's exciting. That's when it really, it really is a good sport. All the way to the plate, and the Bulls now lead it five to one. Two great clutch hits. Let me tell you about an incongruity two nights ago. That the team lost and lost terribly, 16 to nothing. And they huddled out in left field. And the coach, I guess, was saying, what does it matter? You guys are better than this. You know, that kind of speech. But waiting around them were the fans who had stayed here through all of the carnage and were ready to go out there and get autographs. And I said to myself, you know, these are great fans. These are great people. Now, over my years of covering uh, the telephones, uh, the things that they hold now, they come in and they're looking at that all the time, looking at that and they'll sit down and the person next to him, they don't even know and he's looking at that too. But then there's the ping of the bat. And when the ping of the bat happens, they put down their phones and they look, they look at uh, you know, what is happening on the field. Then they start to comment what is happening on the field. Good call, bad call, you know, nice hit, whatever. And they start meeting people again. And by the end of the game, the phones are not being used. There's a conversation going on. And I see that time and time again. I literally grew up in this stadium, but not actually in this one. The one prior to this, the old Rainbow uh, Stadium, which was metal bleachers back in the late 70s when the program was still in its infancy. It was starting to grow and uh, gaining prominence with Derek Tatsuno and they're ranked number one in the country. And it was fun because there was a real atmosphere there. You had a group of folks that would sit in front of the press box and everybody shared food and stuff like that. And then you had families that had their areas staked out under the bleachers and there would be forts and I mean it just had so much character and then with the emergence of Tatsuno the place just kept on getting in terms of fans bigger and bigger and when he would go out on the mound the stadium would be full down the left field lines and the right field lines people would be standing in the outfield uh, beyond uh, up above in left field there'd be cars everybody up there over right field where the power plant is now it was just a hill I mean it was an event whenever Derek talked so and that was really the birth of the program which led to the building of this uh, stadium in 1984. Don Robbs used to do used to be in this particular booth for years and years and years and years I mean you're looking at decades of uh, broadcasting rainbow uh, you know rainbow baseball he is the prodigy of that so he is he is able to use what his father taught him what he learned from his father and his own experience to be a very good announcer, to be uh, really right on. Growing up with my father and then Jim, and then of course you got Kanoa now, who's a bit younger than I am, but uh, 
I get sometimes, we'll sit up in the press box and, and he'll be calling a game and sometimes I get mesmerized because he has that Jim Leahy style that nobody else has, right? The storytelling ability to really draw you in. And sometimes I forget, oh yeah, maybe I'm supposed to say something too because I'm so, I'm so taken by what he's uh, talking about and the way he's describing things. But I feel so fortunate. I mean, how lucky am I to, to work with my father for a few years before he retired and now with Jim Leahy. And in my mind, they're the two greatest local broadcasters ever in, in Hawaii. Be in love with the sport. Be in love with it. I mean, caress it. Caress it so that when you describe it, it's original. And not only that, but it's exciting too. And when you want to start, you bring a tape recorder with you. You sit in the stands, you announce the game, right? I mean, I was five years old, six years old. I was announcing games, throwing rocks in the air, hitting them with an old bat. My father come out, what are you doing? You know, there's other, the neighbors are looking, they think you're crazy. but. That's, that's what I was interested in all of my life. I taught 10 years of high school at Campbell, and part-time, I would, I would, to support my family, I would do play-by-play. Play-by-play so play is an art, uh, and, and because it's an art, it is a creation. And there's only one entity that creates, and that's God. So when you do this and you create it, it's almost godly. Thank you.